Hello there. I'm Jay Cohen, Senior Trainer for TechScan's Dental Division. I'd like to start by thanking you for joining the session today. Today's session is about multi-byte scans. Before we begin, I have a couple of brief comments. Feel free to ask questions. I'm sure you're all familiar with Zoom by now. You can type your question in the Q&A box. We will attempt to answer all questions at the end of the session. If we do not get the opportunity to answer your question, we will contact you directly after the session. Also, if you're experiencing any audio issues, you can also dial in directly instead of using your computer audio. Phone numbers will be listed in your webinar invitation. So we'll just wait a couple more minutes for others to join and we'll get going. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to talk about multi-byte scans today. So let's start with what is a multi-byte scan? So a multi-byte scan is a, is a recording, a T-scan recording of a patient biting on the sensor three to four times. Very simple. Um, and the purpose of the uh, multi-byte is, is proof, trust, and confidence. We want to prove that the bite is repeatable. We want to trust the data. So if it's a repeatable bite, we're more likely to trust the occlusal data that it does in fact represent the patient's bite. And we wanna have confidence in the data, right? We wanna uh, use this data to guide our adjustments. And until you're confident, you're not gonna be using it to guide your adjustments. So uh, using doing a multi-byte scan is gonna give you that uh, repeatability and it's gonna give you the trust. Okay. so. The way we uh, look at a, a, a multi-byte scan or prove the repeatability is we use three different measures. I like to call them three buckets, if you will, or three checking off a, a list of, of three items. The first thing is the force versus time graph. And that's the graph at the bottom of your screen. It's a timeline of the entire uh, recording. The uh, other thing we look at is the center of force. This is that, you can see the red line running through the center of the 2D force view. And then the overall bite pattern, the either the two-dimensional view or the three-dimensional view. Okay, so we're gonna look at all each one of those three things to determine if in fact it is a reproducible recording or it is not. So I'm going to shift, I'm going to switch this over to the, uh, we're going to go to the live tech scan software. Okay, here we are. I already have a movie loaded and we're going to walk through that. So the first thing, as I mentioned, is to look at the force versus time graph. So let's, let's uh, do a bit of an overview on the force time graph. And you notice that the force time graph at the bottom of your screen is a timeline of the entire scan from zero seconds to about eight seconds. So this is an eight second long scan of the patient. And in this case, the patient bites four times. Each bite is represented by the force curve, which is the black trace that runs through the scan. So wherever the scan rises is when the patient is biting together. Okay, so the force trace shows the force increasing. Beginning of the bite is at the A line. As a patient bites with more force, it increases and it ri the force line rises and it becomes a steady flat curve. That would be clenching, steady constant uh, force. And then they open and the force drops back to zero. Then the second bite, they bite together, they clench and they open. Third bite, bite, clench, open. And fourth bite, bite, clench, open. So when we look at these, we wanna see if they're reproducible. Are they similar to each other? Um, within the uh, force trace, you see a red and a green trace. The red trace represents the right side forces. You can see right here, this is the right side. Um, and we have the left side forces with the green trace. So in this particular, for this particular patient, uh, she tends to bite with more force on her right side. As you can see, the right force line is higher than the green force line. I'm gonna just click my mouse in the middle of the first bite so we can look at the actual numerical uh, data. So in the middle of this first bite, we have 54, almost 55% of the total force on the right side of the arch, 45% on the left side. So let's call it 55, 45. Then we go to the next bite. And again, I'm just gonna click in 56, 43, 
uh, again, let's close to 55, 45, right? I'd call that reproducible. The next bite, we get the 55, 45 split. And the last bite, we'll go to the fourth bite. And again, we're at 55, 45. So that's really reproducible. Every time this patient bites together, they have slightly more force on their right side than their left side, and basically 55, 45. Okay, so that's reproducible. We can check that bucket. The next uh, thing we wanna look at is the center of force. And we're gonna, let's look at the center of force of the first bite. And I'm just gonna take the movie back to the beginning of the first bite. And let's just get familiar with the center of force. So the, for, the center of force is a visual indication of balance. It's represented by a red and white diamond. And you can see in this case, the center of force starts on the anterior uh, tooth, tooth number eight. And as the patient continues to bite through the, sense, uh, through the sensor, you can see the center of force moves to react to the new contacts and the difference in forces. So notice in this case, the patient starts between eight and nine, and as they occlude, the center force starts to move to the right posterior side. This tells us that they're, they're hitting early on the anterior teeth, and as they occlude, the uh, right posterior side loads faster than the left posterior side, and that's why the center force is being pulled to that side. It's kind of like a tug of war between the right and the left side, where the right side is winning because that's more forceful earlier than the left side. And as we continue to play through, you can see it continues moving. And at some point, the movie, the center force stops moving. It comes into a static position. And right there, you can see it stops right here. That's called the resting place or static intercuspation. So at this point, the patient has completed their bite. And I'm just gonna play it, I'm gonna rewind it a little bit so we can just kind of see that movement, okay? So as, if it's continuing to move, they're continuing that bite, right? They haven't completed yet. They haven't arrived at maximum intercuspation. So now I'm going forward. Center force is drifting kind of right and posteriorly, and then it stops moving right about there. So that's the resting place for the first bite. Now we'll go to the second bite. And I'm gonna click my uh, B key to just jump right to B2. B2 represents maximum intercuspation. And you can see that the resting place, so this is the travel of the second bite. It's slightly little different. It started on the first bite, I think a little more anteriorly between nine and eight. Uh, so it's slightly left, but that's still considered pretty close. And it moves in a similar direction from anterior left to posterior right. The kind of the same diagonal, right? So that's similar. And where it comes to rest is in a similar place from the first bite. Okay, I'm gonna just jump back to the first bite again so we can kind of remind ourselves where it was. So remember that position. That's where it came to rest in the first bite. When the patient completed their bite in the second bite, it came to rest here. Again, maybe it was just slightly uh, more anteriorly, but very much in the similar uh, position. And then we'll jump to the third bite. Okay, we're now at the B line for the third bite. And you can see again, very similar, uh, pattern from anterior left to posterior right. You see the same angle and it comes to a similar resting place. And finally, we'll go to bite number four. B4 is the is uh, maximum intercuspation for the fourth bite. I'm gonna tap my B key on my keyboard. That's the easiest way to skip around if you wanna skip from one bite to the next. I'm tap my B key. The, the timeline, which is that vertical gray line jumps to the B line, the fourth line, and again, Similar, right? We go from the posterior anterior left to the posterior right. We have that same angle over and over again. And I'll just to go back through that again. So I'm gonna start with my B1. There's the um, B1. So that's maximum intercuspation for bite number one. And then I'm gonna tap my B key to go to the second uh, bite, the second bite, maximum intercuspation, third bite, B3, fourth bite, B4. Okay, so the question is, is each one of those bites similar based on the center of forces movement? And most importantly, the resting place. Do they come to rest in a similar position? And I would say absolutely. You know, again, they're not gonna be in the exact same spot. Uh, it's, a person is in the machine, so they're not gonna bite with the exact same uh, tooth contact pattern or force, but they are very similar in both the, uh, the pattern of the center of force and where they come to rest. Okay, so that's the second criteria. 
And that looks like it's reproducible. So we can check that box off. And the third uh, criteria is the overall bite pattern. Is it similar or is it different? And let's have a look at that. So let's go, let's start with A, A1. So I'm right here. So I'm at the beginning of the first bite. And as I play the movie forward, here we go. And I'm just using the forward key on my keyboard rather than in the software. I can click these buttons here, but you have hot keys or shortcut keys on your keyboard as well. So you can play a movie forward on the bottom right hand corner of your keyboard. You have a, a right, left, up and down arrows. The right arrow is usually marked as end and then you have the left arrow as home. And that uh, right arrow or end key is the forward key. And if I tap it, it'll advance the movie one frame per tap. And that allows me to walk through the movie super slow motion. Okay, I won't, don't miss this because I'm looking at the sequence. So I'm looking at the overall contact pattern. I'm going to speed things up a little bit because we've already seen the center of force. Now I want to look, I like to focus on the 3D view when I'm looking at the contact pattern. It's just a little bit easier to see uh, and relate to the different bites. So I can see uh, the distal, uh, it looks like the, uh, the central fossor of one right there is an early high force, right? And then as that continues to rise through the different colors, the different force colors, and I'm gonna play it till maximum the cuspation. So we have, that's the first contact pattern when the patient's biting or clenching completely, or that completely closed. Now we'll jump over to the second bite, A2, and we're gonna go back and we're gonna see what happens here. Again, early high force in the exact same spot, right? Looks like the central fossor on one again. Right, and it starts to rise and increase in force. Okay, so basically, you want to kind of picture or remember in your mind the best you can the overall contact pattern. Okay, so we can see that looks very similar to the first bite, right? And we're again, we're at the we're kind of just beyond maximum intercuspation of the second bite. And I'm going to jump to the third bite again. I'm tap my A key and it will jump to the next A line to the right, which is the A3, the beginning of the third bite. Okay, and I'm gonna to start to play it forward. Again, you can see the early high force right there. So same guy, same player, right? What I don't want you to get too confused about is the magnitudes of the forces. And I'll explain a little bit more of that in a moment. You can see this one here, this became red and increase in force. And then we'll jump finally to the, the fourth bite. And we're gonna say, again, I'm looking for reproducibility. Is this bite reproducible? Because if this is reproducible data, you're gonna feel a lot more confident with the data and you're gonna feel a lot more comfortable using this to guide your adjustments, okay? So if I go back to, so you can see I'm just clicking through uh, back between three and four. They're almost identical, I can see in the, these areas here. So what I wanted to point out with, uh, as far as magnitude is concerned, let's look at this contact, this green one here on the left side on the third bite. I'm gonna jump over to the fourth bite. So now here it's orange, it's the same contact, right? It's the same contact, I'm in the third bite. It's just not as forceful, but it's the same contact. Here, it's more forceful on the fourth bite. So I don't want you to confuse that. That's still a, it's still the same contact. It's the same players, if you will. Okay, the same teeth are making contact. So the pattern is similar. So again, to me, this is looks reproducible um, because it's the overall contact pattern is reproducing itself. Okay, so just to review quickly, I just want to just go back over the three sets of criteria. One is the force time graph. Okay, is that similar? And you can just look at, you can look at it. You don't have to even click through it. You can just look and see that the red, the, the, the uh, space between the red trace, right side, and the green trace, left side, is similar for each bite. A little bit more, I would say a little more separation. Here. But generally, we're more forceful on the right side than the left and right around 45, 55 uh, difference. So I see this four bites, all similar. I consider that reproducible. The next set of criteria we looked at was the center of force, is that reproducible? And by just going to the B line and just tapping my B key, that speeds things up. I'm clicking B on my keyboard. I'm at B3, just cause that's where we were at. It always jumps to the right. 
So if I go, I'm at B4, it's going to go back to B1. Tap B, oh, got to jump around. So I'm at B1, and then B2, B3, B4, and you can just keep clicking and just watch the pat pattern over and over again. And then you can make your determination. Do you feel it's reproducible? The shape is certainly reproducible. The uh, resting place is very close. It's not exact, but it's close. Okay, so if you determine that that's reproducible, you check that bucket. And then thirdly, was the overall contact pattern? And you could use the B line again as your kind of the, the time point of where you want to look at the data. So if I'm at B1 and I look at this contact pattern, I can, re, I can also um, uh, re, uh, spin this around. I'm just going to right click and reset it. So it's at the um, default position. So here's B1, I'm gonna tap B2. So there's B1 and B2. I'm gonna just snap around quickly again, B1. Okay, the, that's initial maximum intercuspation for the first bite. I'm gonna to go to the maximum intercuspation for the bites, second bite, almost no difference. Then we go to B3. Again, similar, not exact, but very similar. And B4, okay, B1. Again, I'm focusing on the 3D view and I'm just snapping to the B line. B1, B2, B3, B4. And I just keep tapping B, 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 B. And I can just watch to see if it looks similar or different. If they're very different, then you would probably rescan. Do another multi-byte scan and see if you can get a more reproducible byte. As all you know, um, not every byte is reproducible. Not every patient has the ability to be reproducible. Some people just don't have that home base, if you will. Um, and that, of course, makes your job a little bit more difficult. But if you get a reproducible bite, and I, again, in this case, we've kind of checked those three boxes, um, then I feel real comfortable with this data, that I can use this data to guide my adjustments. So what I probably might do is, uh, as a tiebreaker, I have four bites, and we don't expect you to go to each bite and analyze each bite. You'll be there forever. So as a tiebreaker, if you feel it's reproducible, you might just want to go to the bite that has the highest uh, maximum force or peak force. The peak force is represented by this black force trace. Okay, The higher it is in the graph, the more force there is. So this is the peak moment for the first bite. This is the peak moment for the second bite. They don't reach 100%. And I'll just go back to one again. I just want to show you the percentage as uh, numerically. So this position right here is 87% of the total force. Okay, then this bite, 88%. So it's close. These are pretty close in magnitude. You can even see that. Then this one almost goes to 100%. It might even get to 100%. Okay, there's always going to be one um, frame in every movie equal to 100%. That's when the patient bites the hardest. So you can see we're right around 98%. And then I'm going to go to the fourth bite. And you can see that one looks like that probably would have one frame in it that's equal to 100%. Now, if you want to just do it quickly and having, I know, I can, again, visually, I can just look at this and I can see it's going to be this one or that one. Um, and really, at that point, it probably doesn't really matter which one you use because the magnitudes are so close. But if I want to find the exact point that has the most force, I can go to my view menu and click maximum byte force. And wherever that is, you can see right now my timeline is here. Wherever that is, the software, the timeline will snap to that point. I'm gonna click maximum bite force. And it's right here, that's maximum bite force. That's the moment that this patient bites the hardest during this entire scan. Okay, so every scan, every move you take will have one frame that's equal to 100%. And you can see right here, okay? So the software um, normalizes the data. After the recording is made, the software goes, looks at the entire movie. It finds the one frame with the most force in it, and it makes that equal to 100%. So essentially, it's building the graph around the data. So after the data is there, it matches up this 100% line that's across the top to the highest point in the graph, and this is the one. So that's your peak force. That's the time when this patient bites the hardest. So I'm gonna go just click right before the A line and then I can tap A and it will snap to the A to the right, which is A4. So now I'm at the beginning of bite number four. That's the one I'm gonna use for my analysis. Okay, so once I get there, then I wanna tap through the movie. Okay, and I just wanna stress that 
um, when you start to do an, your analysis, you want to look at uh, not just force and magnitudes of force, but you want to look at timing and sequence. It's critical. Otherwise, you're jumping over a lot of important data. So here we are at the beginning of the bite at the A line. We know the B is initial maximum intercuspation. So the whole bite occurs between the A and the B. Now I could just jump to the B line and I say, okay, here I am and all the high force and I'm gonna go and adjust the pinks and maybe the, the oranges or reds. Um, but to do that would be to skip a lot of important information. We just jumped over all this information between A and B. So let's go back to A, four, tap around. And I'm gonna go slowly. So I'm just tapping the end key on my keyboard to go one frame at a time. And I'm going slowly and sequentially. And I notice these are all similar in force. There's no one tooth contact that really stands out that we would call a premature contact. And then this guy comes along. So right there. So that would maybe be a candidate for treatment. Okay, you might wanna consider adjusting that because what happens early affects what happens later. Okay, so now we click here and we see, and look at there was actually a change, right? You saw a little bit of a change, uh, which one became the more forceful. So now I have these two and they're both pink. So if I just jump to this time point, I would not be able to tell which one of these happened first. But we know that because we have the benefit of time and we know that this became pink earlier than that. Okay, so again, Go to, once you determine it's a reproducible uh, scan, go to the bite, again, if you want to, uh, for a tiebreaker, find the bite with the most force, um, and then go to the A line and tap through to the B line, and then look for the early high forces, and those are the ones you might want to consider um, adjusting. Okay, so the, the T scan is going to help guide your adjustments, and it's going to point to an area or a neighborhood, and it's going to say, let's go here posterior right. So just imagine that this was a, uh, instead of looking at a, a T-scan occlusal data, we were looking at uh, marks on the teeth with articulating paper. Say we used a piece of horseshoe articulating paper and we had, we marked the entire arch and then we look in the mouth and all, what we see is a bunch of marks in the teeth that are all the same color. So we can't determine which one of those marks uh, happen first, second, or third. All we know from marks in the teeth is that at some point between the first contact and the last contact, those teeth touched. It's helpful information. Articulating paper are, is a complementary product to T-scan because we still need it, but it doesn't give us all of the information. It doesn't give us the timing. I can't tell from the marks which one happened first, second, third, and it doesn't give us the magnitude or the force, which one of those contacts on the teeth are the most forceful. And I know that they've taught, uh, you know, the darker marks, the bigger marks, the donut marks, those might be higher forces. They might be, but they may not be. So uh, once you get to this point, because you may go over here with articulating paper marks, say, oh, I see a lot of contact over here. Maybe I'll go adjust there first. So it, this takes the guesswork out. It allows you to, uh, once you get to the point where you're comfortable and you allow T-Scan to guide your adjustments, um, then you would take your articulating paper, go into this area and mark it, and then adjust on the marks. Okay. So that concludes the, uh, the multi-byte scan and how to use it to um, determine whether a byte is, is reproducible and if it's good, reliable data and it's representative data, does it represent the patient's bite? And now I'm gonna switch back to the, um, my PowerPoint, bear with me. Okay. Okay, so um, if, any, if, you, any, if there are any questions out there, please feel free to type them in. And we'll take a moment and see if you guys have any questions for me. Okay, so Jay, we do have one question here. Um, yeah. Can you input digital scans into T-Scan software? And is it helpful in identifying which the area that the teeth may be, like which area may be the culprit, especially if you have difficulty in seeing lines versus charts? Yeah, so you say digital, we're talking about digital impressions. 
I assume. Correct. Yeah. Importing That's digital impressions. Assume. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So T Scan does have a feature uh, called DIO, Digital Impression Overlay. And I can demonstrate that. Let me go back. Let me share my screen. That's a great question. Um, back to my T scan. Okay. So let's look at one of those. I should have an example. I'm going to go, go into my database here and show all patients. And you folks should have these in your T scan. This is included with your T scan system. We include some example patients or demonstration uh, movies. So they're probably at the top of your database. Uh, this is called DIO1, Digital Impression Overlay. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, load that in. Good. So there you go. So I just wanted to demonstrate to show you what a digital impression would look like. Once you get to that point, you can toggle between the, the original um, arch model the 2D arch model with this button right here, click it. And now we're back to the original scan. So in either case, whether you do the digital impression overlay or not, you still need to know and use T-Scan without it. Um, but once you uh, import it, it is helpful. It can certainly help you to like lay down the, the interproximal or the embrasure lines between the teeth because I can just see where the teeth are and I can grab these lines and I can kind of just customize my arch so the the teeth are separated correctly. Now, once I have the impression, the digital impression, um, I can then play the movie and it will play the forced data over the digital impression. So I hope that answers your question. Perfect. And it doesn't look like we have any other questions that are coming okay. in. So you okay. did a really great, great job explaining it. Thank you. Beautiful. Well, thank you folks all for joining today. Um, and if you if if anybody has uh, has questions after this, um, you certainly can ask questions anytime. We're um, always available to take questions. And let me just again share that final screen. Share. Yeah. So you can see right on this screen. If you have additional questions, you can just uh, send them to info at techscan.com. And thank you folks all for joining my uh, the session today and uh, have a enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Thank you.